So we've talked about how we can give the model context that we control, but what about if we want the model to dynamically retrieve context itself? That's where tool calling comes in. Let's take a look. Okay, now that you understand what context is and how it works, let's explore how AI models can do more than just generate text. They can actually take actions and retrieve information dynamically through tool calling. We talked about how AI models are like API endpoints. Tool calling is like giving those models the ability to call other APIs themselves. It's like the model can learn new skills. So if we go back to the cooking analogy, I'm like really hungry today or something. Imagine you're helping a friend cook and you're giving them instructions over the phone. You can give them these steps, but you can't actually see what's inside their fridge or taste the food that they're making. But imagine that they send you a photo of their fridge or they tell you the exact temperature of their oven. Suddenly you can give way better advice because you have access to this real time information. That's basically what tool calling does for AI models. The developers who are building AI applications are able to give the models these specific tools and extend the abilities beyond just thinking and responding with text. Now, you actually have already seen us use tools many different times in the demos that I've shown so far. And here's what's happening under the hood. The model is getting a request and it recognizes that it needs some additional capabilities like searching the code base or reading and writing to files. It takes this response in JSON so a structured data format, and it specifies what tool to use and what parameters to pass. Then the application runs that tool and returns the response, and the model can incorporate that into the context and continue the conversation. So let's go into cursor and take an example of using tools in a chat. So I've got the agent open on the right, and I'm gonna say fix all of the lint issues in this project. Now we're gonna see that the agent is able to call a number of different tools. We see it read the ESLint file, that's reading a tool. We see that it runs ESLint through a shell command, that's also calling a tool. And as the model works, as the agent works, it calls additional files, it greps or searches over additional files, and it uses the shell to check the status of ESLint, which it's failing some things here makes some code modifications so we can actually click in and see the changes. That looks great. And then we see, hey, it fixed all the issues for us. Uh, and it was able to successfully run the lint command again and validate that everything was working correctly. This is a great example of the model and the agent taking advantage of tools to be able to autonomously solve its own issues. This is why tools are so helpful when building software. You can read and write files in your code base, you can search through code, you can find specific functions or patterns, you can run shell commands, you can go search documentation or anything on the web, you can read back the results of linters or tests. Without tools, the models would be limited to only the information that you explicitly provide it in the context. But with tools, it can actively explore and interact with your code base. Now, remember how we talked about tokens and pricing? Tool calls also consume tokens in two different ways. The first is the tool definitions, which get included in the input context, which honestly isn't that many tokens. But number two, more importantly, are the results of calling a tool. So the output that gets put into the context. Now this is gonna vary based on the tool, how it's defined, how it's implemented. But the general theme is that conversations will fill up a lot faster and you'll fill up more of that context window when you're using tools. Now, this trade-off is usually worth it because as we saw in this demo, it's really helpful when the model can autonomously use tools in a loop and be able to solve problems on its own while accessing this real-time information. Recently, a new standard called Model Context Protocol, or MCP, was created. And you can think about this like a universal way for AI models to integrate and use tools across the entire ecosystem. And not just external ones, but also internal tools and APIs. So you might connect to Figma to get some design files or Linear to view issues or even query and read data from some internal database. Let's look at an example of how you can use MCP inside of Cursor. So I've already configured the Vercel MCP to work with Cursor 
And in my agent chat here, I'm gonna say, how many projects do I have on the Lerob site for sale team? I can ask a question that requires external context and external information. And the Vercel MCP is like teaching the AI model new tricks or new skills. It knows and it has these tools available to list the teams and list the projects. And I see that there's about 11 projects on my Vercel team. This is able to go and securely authenticate and connect with that account and then bring that conversation back into the model context. So now that you understand how individual tool calls work, let's see what happens when we let the AI models use multiple tools in a sequence. That's where things start to get really interesting when working with AI agents. <laughs>